you doing? So I got myself one of these. It's really heavy. Synology 6 Bay NAS. We're gonna open it up. We're gonna show you what it looks like. We're then gonna configure it. We're gonna stick some drives into it. But before we do show you this amazing NAS, this is a tech YouTube channel, so you need to subscribe. Now, we move on to the fun part. Here's the unit 6 Bay DS1621 Plus. As you can see, we've got our six trays there for our six hard drives. And you've got your standard LEDs as well. You've got a status LED, an alert LED, let you know when things are going pear-shaped. And the four LAN LEDs to let you know when there's activity on the four ports on the back. Here are our four ports, four ethernet ports, a couple of USBs, as well as some expansion ports if you do want to add additional trays to your actual NAS and make it bigger. We've also got a power and a couple of big mammoth fans. Sticking your hard drives in is super easy. Just push on these little buttons on the front. The thing clips out and here is our tray. You just stick your hard drives into there. You can screw them into place if you've got a two and a half inch or a three and a half inch. We just easily slot all these out and put our hard drives in. And then we just power the puppy up, put in our ethernet cables into there, as many as you need, and then we power it on. So on our computer, we're going to open up a browser window and we're going to go to find.synology.com. Now, if your NAS has been plugged in it's on the network, at least it should be on the network, it's got itself its own IP address using DHCP, then this command should work. You should be able to find your Synology NAS this way. If for whatever reason this doesn't work, you can also type in Synology NAS colon 5000. Perfect. So it's found the DS1621 Plus. There it is. It's got itself its own IP address. You can see its MAC address as well. So we're going to click on connect. We're going to accept those terms and conditions if you're happy with those. And continue on that privacy statement. Excellent. So we can now click on set up. Install the latest DSM. So this is now going to go to the internet, making sure that your Synology NAS does have internet access. So it will need internet access. You now need to download the DSM, which is the operating system to run on that Synology NAS. And then it'll install it on that NAS. And then we can look at configuring the disks. So we're going to select install now. Of course, it's letting me know that all the disks are going to be deleted. All the data is going to be removed. So that the process will take roughly about 10 minutes. May take less, may take a little bit more. Really depends on the amount of disks you've got, the size of those drives, and the speed of your internet connection to be able to download that DSM. And now, go and grab yourself a coffee, or a tea, if you like tea better than coffee. Now we'll check back once we are ready. We're ready. Give the device a name, create your admin account, and then a strong password for your NAS. Of course, you want this to be a very strong password that only administrators can access. We're going to select the top one so that we can actually install updates automatically. Creating yourself a Synology account could be useful to you. So if you want to use it, you can see the benefits right there. You can create, otherwise you can skip this step. So if you choose to use Quick Connect, uh, you're going to get yourself a unique address right there where you can access the NAS from wherever. Happy days, here you are on your NAS. If you're seeing this, great. It means that your DSM has downloaded, it's installed, you've done some basic configuration. But now the next step is, as it says, to go and create some storage pools and some volumes because you've got disks inside your NAS that are not really doing anything. You can't save any data. You can't access your NAS really the way that you need it to. So now we go and configure it. This is the fun part. So you can manually just go and create that right now by selecting create now. But in future, if you do want to go do this manually, on the top left hand corner, you've essentially got a little main menu button, very similar to the Windows key, the Windows button, the Windows menu on Windows, and you can select Storage Manager. And here you can access all the information about your storage, including how to create a storage pool and a volume. So now you pick the type of RAID that you want to use. SHR is Synology's RAID. So this is called Synology Hybrid RAID. It's uh, used primarily for Synology drives. And essentially you can mix and match different drive sizes. You can add different drive sizes later on and then add them to that existing RAID. You've also got RAID 1, you've got BASIC, you've got JBOD, which is just a bunch of disks, and you've got RAID 0 as well. If you want to know a little bit more about those other versions, the other options here, you can go and do some other research. I've got other videos on RAID if you want to. Now, because I've only got two drives in there, I don't have other options such as RAID 5 or RAID 6 or RAID 10. 
but if you have a different pool, different numbers of discs, then you may have other options available around RAID. Now, because this is a Synology NAS, I personally like the benefits of this SHR RAID type. So that's the option that I'm going to use. Now, because I've got two drives in there, one of them is for fault tolerance. Of course, you have more disks in there, you're gonna potentially have more fault tolerance depending on the RAID type that you're also selecting. Now, you can actually call this pool something that is meaningful. So I can call it SHR pool. And this is essentially those two disks and we're gonna be raiding them together and creating a storage pool within that group of raided disks. Next. Now, what are the two disks that we want to use? Both of them. Now, you will notice that with SHR, you can just use one drive if you so need to, but of course, that's really defeats the purpose of RAID. I would generally recommend using two or more if you are wanting to splice and slice your NAS in different ways, if you have a lot more disks, if you've got a bigger NAS, for example, I mean, this one, of course, we've got six drives, but if you had a different version, for example, you had a 16 bay, you may wanna create different RAID types depending on what sort of data is gonna be living on there. So you select the drives that you need to form your RAID. Now you'll also see that down the bottom, it's detected that there are two drives that do not meet the drive requirements. And if I select those, it's because I've got a couple of these NVMe SSD, uh, essentially they're expansions, they make my NAS work faster. We're not gonna be covering that on this video. We'll have a future video where we talk about what these are and the benefits of getting these NVM uh, drives because you will get actually better performance out of it, but you can't actually use those as part of this raid uh, that we actually are creating. Next, now do you wanna do a drive check? You can perform the drive check or you can skip it. I would generally skip it in this case and manually look at it if you do need to have any drive checks, okay? And then in the storage pool, you now create the volumes and the volumes is essentially what's gonna be accessible from the network, what you're gonna be able to access from your computer to be able to get all your files and, and actually use your NAS. So you'll see that the total here, I've got a couple of eight terabyte drives, but it's sort of calculated it down to 7.4 terabytes roughly you see that that's a total available is the same because it's actually empty and now we create the volume which is how big do you want the volume to be in this storage pool you can create multiple volumes in this case we're going to be creating just one volume but then you can go and create a second volume if you so choose to so for now we're going to create a volume that is 4,000 or four terabytes big we can give this a uh, name so I'm going to say 4 TB volume 4 terabyte volume Next, and essentially it's gonna use 4,000 of the 7,447. Now this is where you select the file system. I'll just leave it as the recommended. This essentially is the format of the disk that you're gonna be formatting. Summary of what's gonna happen and apply. Of course, another warning letting you know that all the data is gonna be erased. Of course, we don't have any data because it's brand new. Yeah. Storage pool created, it's called SHR pool, 7.3 terabytes. It's made up of these two disks, drive one, drive two, each of these being 7.3, but of course, because we've used SHR, it's using one for drive fault tolerance. And there is the volume, which is a 3.8 terabytes or four terabyte volume, which is what we created. And it's just using a little bit right there. And you'll see that there is the storage summary, storage pool on the left, and then the volume inside of that storage pool. And then under HDD SSD, here are a summary of our two disks. You can see the health info, as well as my two cache or cache drives right there that uh, we haven't set up just yet. Okay, so a little bit more information here. We've now created our volume, a RAID, a storage pool, and a volume within it. Now we're gonna go and create a share within that so that we can then share it out on the network. Uh, on the right, you've got a little bit of a summary. Here is some widgets. You can add these widget, widgets. You can see what's going on, system health. You can move them around. Other settings on the very top, including how to shut down, restart your NAS. And of course, your main menu over here, we've got access to a whole bunch of stuff, including the package center, which is the app store, allowing you to go and download and install a whole bunch of apps, Synology apps, other apps, which is really cool. And what we're gonna firstly now do is go into our control panel because the whole point of this NAS, of course, is to actually add files to it. So we're gonna go into here and under file sharing, you're gonna select shared folder. At the moment, this is blank. There are no shared folders. So at the moment, we don't have any repository, any folder for me to be able to copy data to and to be able to access it from my computer. So we're gonna select create, create shared folder right here. Let's give it a name. So this is now gonna be called movies. My movies live here. Where is it going to create this? Well, at the moment, I've just got the one volume. And there it is. If you had multiple volumes, of course, we showed you how to create volumes. If you had multiple volumes, you can do that from there. You can enable the recycling bin if you so want to use that. Great. Next, 
you want to encrypt the shared folder? Yes or no? If you don't, that's fine. You can leave it. Next. You can leave all the rest. There's other cool things such as quotas, like we won't go into that, but there's other cool settings that you can set against it. Next. Now the permissions are essentially the users that are going to be able to access that data. So when you open up Windows Explorer, when you're on the Finder on your Mac, if you're on Linux, whatever, and you go and navigate to the NAS and you look for your shared folder, it's going to ask you for a username and password. And that's essentially what we're setting up here is what is the username and password, the account that you want to be able to access. Now I've already created one here called ED Aguero. So I'm going to say that we want to be able to do read and write. The admin can also do read and write and apply. So that is now created. I've got a movies shared folder. Now we go and navigate to file station. File station is very similar to your Windows Explorer or your finder on your, uh, on your Mac. And here is my movies folder. I can now go and create. And these are just folders. There's nothing in there yet. Now I want to start adding stuff to it. So that's me creating this. Now look, I'm just going to show you very quickly how I access this data on our Windows computer. We open up Windows Explorer. I'm going to go down to Network and it should be discoverable right there. You can also go into your address bar and do a backslash backslash and then the IP address of your NAS. We can double click on this. Our movie share. So on my Mac, I've just literally gone into the network area. I've already found it right here. Here's my Emilio NAS. And now I need to connect to it. And here is where I actually add the username and the password that we've just set up. There's my folder, movies. So this beast of a NAS is all set up, it's working, it's really heavy because it's really good quality and it's stuck full of disks, which makes the thing really heavy. Before we do finish, click on that subscription button on the bell so that you don't miss out on any of my tech videos. And like this video, comment, let me know down below what you thought as well. Thanks again, we will see you next time.